Welcome back to Ringworm, folks. As you know, I don't do educational videos. I don't try to teach anybody anything. I'm out here, I've been out here for over a year now, living in a tent, building this kind of trash just to amuse myself, to keep, my, to keep me entertained. So if you're a regular viewer of the channel and you're used to seeing um, a lot of chainsaw milling and stupid things get built, uh, this video might not be for you. I just wanted to talk for a little bit about milling chains because I've gotten so many questions in the in the comments about them and I know looking online there's just so much different information and everybody has a strong opinion on which chain you should use why it's way better than all the rest you know what angle to file it and everything so I mean this is just going to be specifically milling chains um, what I've learned about them and why I don't believe there can be one right answer for everybody on which is the best so I'll give you the pros and cons for what specifically for what I'm doing and then maybe you can take that information and adjust it for exactly what you're doing so see if I can get this other log on here go back to camp show you a couple chains I got out some chains here. I'm gonna do a little test. Uh, when I started doing this, started milling, I basically just wanted the chain that would make the shortest work of whatever I was milling. So I kept getting more and more aggressive chains and found that in the long run, throughout the course of a day, the most aggressive chains, the ones that, that cut the fastest initially, tended to wear out the fastest. So I'd end up having to switch the chains out all the time to do that. So then. I kind of went to different grind angles and different types of chains and I swear I've tried every chain, every angle you could possibly do. So I pulled out um, five different chains here that I have. Uh, some of them, some of the different grind angles I've just, you know, I tried it and it didn't work well so I reground it to something else but I've got a good variety here. Two real milling chains, one that I made and then a couple of standard chains and I'll just see if I can show you the difference between them and why I think some of them are better. I also want to say again that this is my experience is most of my experience is with this chainsaw. It's a 261. It's really a small saw uh, to be used for milling, but I'm ex almost exclusively milling white woods. So 80 to 90 percent of the wood I mill is cedar, and then the other leftover bit is pine and that's it. I use this because it's light. I can move it around by hand and it's what mostly grows here. Generally, when you're running a saw, there's no sense in having a really long bar on it if you're only going to cut small stuff. So you're basically, you're wasting energy by moving that big long chain around. Now, I found with milling that that is still true. You lose power by having a, an excessively long chain. However, if you're just milling one board, maybe that doesn't matter. If you're milling tons and tons of logs, if your chainsaw has the power, um, and you can put a longer bar on and a longer chain. If you think about it, each one of those teeth has to do less work. So if this was, if this chain was twice as long, I could run it twice as long basically uh, without having to stop and sharpen the chain because you've got that many more teeth. And that does make a big difference. Also, if you have a massive chainsaw, uh, more power than you really need, you can run different chains as well. Um, a little bitty chainsaw won't push a lot of the same chains that the really big ones do. I can't say what if any one of these cuts very much faster than the other, but I have found that the Grandberg or just a regular semi-chisel chain 
stay sharp the longest, which makes sense. If you're just doing normal cuts through a log, you're cutting down trees or whatever, semi-chisel chain stays sharp longer. I like to use whatever works the best, works the longest, switch it out. I go through all the chains I have, put them all in a stack, and then I go through and sharpen them all. And the semi-chisel and the Grandberg, which is a semi-chisel chain, to me seem to seem to last the longest. Now I don't I don't know what that means for people that are running different saws, cutting hardwoods. I can't tell you that. I could I mean I can almost guarantee that these semi-chisel chains will stay sharp longer, but I think anybody would know that because that's how it works when you're just cross-cutting like normal. So I do still have a couple of these chains that I've sharpened funny at funny angles and I'm gonna do one quick test here. It's not gonna be it's actually not going to be that quick and I'm not really looking forward to doing it, but I got a nice slab of cedar here. These are all sharp. So I'm going to put each different chain on and I'm going to make a one foot cut. I'll mark it out on here where to start, where to end. Take the chainsaw out of the mill, switch out the chain and then do another one foot cut. And then I want to open this up and actually see what each cut looks like. Although I don't care what they look like. Um, you guys might be curious to see if you're you know if you're cutting something a nice piece of wood and you want a nice finish you probably don't want to use a regular pull chisel chain you can you can mill i mean you can mill with any of these but maybe you don't want that really rough chainsaw look because you're just going to have to finish it out so this isn't going to be the most fun i've ever had but since i've never seen this online and you know all the reading that i did before i started doing this i could not find exact answers to this so maybe this will help some of you figure out which chain will work best for you. So I'll just go over these really quickly in case you don't know this, most of you probably do. If you're getting into chainsaw milling, you already know quite a bit about chains. Uh, this is a full chisel chain and you can see it's got this sharp corner on it. So if you were to look at this from the front back, the tooth looks kind of like with a sharp corner on here. This one here is a semi chisel chain. I don't know if you can see the uh, cutter tooth there, where is it right there? It has a rounded corner. So generally, this chain will cut a lot faster than this one. Uh, it's more aggressive, but they don't stay sharp as long. What I've found is as soon as this corner goes dull, even if your top plate, plate is still sharp, uh, you won't be able to push through the wood anymore. With this one, you don't have, sorry, I'm having trouble with my, <laughs> with my pencil and my camera work here um, you don't have that sharp corner to wear out so these are also more forgiving if you run into the dirt uh, cut through dirty bark and just otherwise run it for a long time this is a homemade attempt at a milling chain and I have read people's accounts that say this is the absolute only chain to ever use for milling this is a full chisel chain you can see it's got the sharp corner on it but instead of this regular full chisel chain that is sharpened, this one's sharpened at a 30 degree angle here. I've taken this one and knocked it down to zero degrees. And only because I read a couple people that said, oh, they've milled thousands of board feet of, of wood and this is the only thing that you should use. My experience is it's not as good and that it's not as long lasting as a semi chisel chain. This one I just bought um, I actually have the package here. I couldn't get a hold of the chains that I like best uh, because of COVID, they're so back ordered. So I found this one for really cheap online and I got it. It does say it's a milling chain and it's a semi chisel. And instead of being sharpened at around 30 degrees, I believe it's sharpened at 15 degrees. So you can see this edge here is just a little bit, uh, just a little bit of an angle not straight across and not that normal 35 degree or 30 degree angle this one i haven't tried yet although i have sharpened a regular semi chisel like this um, down to less than uh, 30 degrees i've gone from 0 15 20 35 everything just to see what worked the best so i i'm pretty sure i know how this is going to work it's just a semi chisel chain with a different grind on it now, I tried all these other chains in these different angles of grind, um, all these different combinations, mostly because I'm kind of a cheapskate 
and I figured how big a difference can there be between a real, I mean, this is considered a real milling chain, but this is the one, um, this mill is made by Granberg. It's a fantastic mill, by the way, it's the sl smallest one they make. So this is a Granberg milling chain, and I guess here's their explanation of what happens. So this is a semi-chisel chain. These small teeth are sharpened at a 30 degree angle. There's one on either side. And then they have a cutting tooth that is sharpened at zero degrees. Well, this is gonna be one messed up sacrificial board. We'll see how it goes. All right, that was the zero degree full chisel. It was noticeably smoother running. It didn't, didn't have a lot of chatter like the regular full chisel at 30 degrees did, which is, you know, I do a lot of make boards like this. And then when I build with them, I'll make a board, take a chalk line, snap a straight line. And then I usually use that little saw to rip the edge of it off to get that straight edge on the board. And I just have two different chains for the little saw. I have a full chisel and a semi chisel. And I can't use the full chisel to rip the, to rip boards, just free handing like this along the edge of the board to cut that off. A full chisel just bounces all over the place. So I always end up putting a semi chisel on there and it, it's a lot smoother making a cut. So that's what that felt like. This one is a semi-chisel chain with a regular 30 degree grind on it. This is the brand new semi-chisel uh, with the 15 degree, that one made by Archer, which I've never used before. I did, I was considering doing this, uh, trying to do a speed test too, to see how fast they actually go through the wood, but it's not really a fair comparison because I don't have all these new. Some of them are right at the end of their lives. Some of them are brand new. So there are a lot of other factors that would go into how fast it would run or even how long it would stay sharp. So we'll just have to have a look at the cuts and see, see what they look like. Last but not least, the Granberg milling chain with the two different types of teeth on it. I don't know. I don't know which one's going to be the smoothest, really. I mean, you'd think the purpose-built purpose, purpose -built one that's so fancy would do it, do it the best, but I don't know if it's going to be that much different from this chain that I just ran. We'll find out, I guess. Well, since this is the last chain, I'm just going to rip it all the way to the end.
All right, I think we'll be able to tell any difference. So this was really dull chain that I had on there just to get the thing started. And then this is the full chisel chain, sharpened at a full 30 degrees. I can see, I mean, it doesn't look too bad. It's a little rough. I do see some spots up here that are kind of torn up. That's kind of what I would expect to see from that. Some torn up wood. And then this is again the full chisel, but this is, I sharpened straight across. And that is quite a difference. That is incredibly smooth for what I've seen. I don't know if you can see the difference from here to here. So that's 30, that's zero degrees. And now we've got the semi chisel sharpened at the full 30 degrees, which to me looks really similar to this. I'm a little bit surprised. I guess not too surprised. And then this is that archer chain. Um, that was a semi chisel chain sharpened, it came sharpened, I'm pretty sure it's 15 degrees, 10 or 15 degrees. And that looks, that looks quite rough. So here's the 30 degree semi chisel and here's the 15 degree semi chisel and that being a brand new chain. And the last one is that fancier milling chain from Granberg that I really like because it seems to last a lot longer than the rest. And here's the break. So here's the 15 degree semi chisel. I can see quite a big difference. I do feel like I see more waves in it here. Um, that could be from imperfect sharpening. It could just be from the chain. I don't know. I guess when you get alternating teeth that are of different types, maybe you're more likely to get that ripple in there. Very interesting. Overall, I'd say the smoothest one does appear to be the zero degree full chisel. So that's kind of cool. You can just buy your own full chisel chains and you know get them at a good price and then sharpen them right to zero degrees if you want smooth boards. That is um, that is remarkably the winner. <laughs> Gosh, it is a big difference. Look at the difference between that zero degree and then the regular 30 degree. Huh, I'll be. Well, if I was trying to make really smooth boards, I'd buy inexpensive full chisel chains and sharpen them to zero. I'd say from a head to head test, if you want a smooth board, I, I mean, to my eyes, I'm trying to think of what we could have changed to make, you know, to make one work better than the other. And I can't really think of anything. I mean, maybe having the depth gauges, the rakers filed down a little further on one than another. Um, I do tend to, with all my chains, just when I'm milling, I take the, the depth gauges down a little extra, a little more than I normally would just for regular cutting. They seem to work better and you seem to get more of a cut out of it, like a, more life out of each uh, sharpening. It would have been nice if all the chains were brand new to go head to head and see what they look like. Take it for what it is. Um, and then if you want, it's this is just an opinion. This is just what I've noticed, that you do get a lot more life out of milling with semi chisel chains. So the cut clearly isn't as pretty. I'd say that Granberg chains that I like so much, they're, I can't remember, I think they're like 35 bucks a piece or 40 bucks where that Archer chain that looked pretty horrible on the milling here was like $18 or something. So who knows? I mean, take it whichever way you will. Um, I pay, I don't mind the ripple. I mean, that the the fancy milling chain does seem to be the rippliest cut. It doesn't have so much grab. It's not uh, chewing up the wood, but you do see a lot of lumps and bumps in it. However, for me, the fact that I can cut, in some cases, 50 to 100% more board feet before sharpening it, um, I mean, that makes it kind of no contest. Some of these, I, I generally just mill small cedar logs, like I mentioned, and, you know, I guess I could go up to, this is a eight, uh, 20 inch bar. You put the mill on it, you lose a few inches, and then, you know, you don't want to mill right to the tip of the bar. So, you know, I might mill up to 
16, 15, 16 inch logs. I've got one laying here. That's not normal. I don't like to do that because I just, I don't like to move them. Um, I don't like to pick them up and set them on here. So um, I do smaller logs in really light wood and I tend to mill a lot of logs at a time. So I'll br I bring, I probably wouldn't get the mill out for less than four or five logs. So when I, when I am milling, I don't like to go through nine chains just to do five logs, which really can happen. For the money, I'd mill with a semi-chisel chain. I have a couple of the Granberg chains and I have the semi-chisel chain. And actually I leave that semi-chisel at 30 degrees and I find it lasts quite a long time. So I go between the Granberg chains and the semi-chisel chain. I use those three in rotation. Once the three of them are dull, I'll go sharpen them. So anyway, that's all I got. I learned something. Hope you guys did too. Just remember everything you read online is people's opinions, just like these are my opinions. Take it all with a grain of salt, adjust it to your own needs. And more than anything, I think the person that wins is the one that's having the most fun. So whatever works for you, keep at it. If you guys want to see some more building projects, this lumber right here is going on the sky deck I'm working on. Should have it finished up in the next couple weeks. Uh, maybe, I think it's the last video, had the sky deck, the first part of it in there. It's a 15 foot high deck in the middle of the woods back here in the middle of nowhere where I live, the middle of nowhere. That's my house back there. So if you got comments that are constructive, I'd love to hear them. Any other thoughts on milling chains or anything milling related, let me know. Subscribe to see the other videos. Thanks.